the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Straight ahead here on DC News Now at 6, George Washington University students receive alerts following a shooting near the campus. What neighbors are saying about the investigation. Plus, with gun control top of mind for many lawmakers, a look at the efforts to pass new legislation. And if you haven't filed your taxes just yet, we have a few tips you need to know to stretch your dollars. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6. I'm Annalisa Gale. Let's start tonight's show with some look now at what's happening later tonight with the temperatures expected to drop a little bit. Hey, meteorologist Scott Sumner. Hello there, anchor Annalisa. <laughs> All right, our weather forecast is uh, going a little downhill as uh, tonight. We have a front I talked about yesterday that's moving closer to the area. But first, I want to show you some video. We had uh, some video that was shot earlier today. There was some rays of sunshine around the district, Roslyn area. Beautiful uh, view there. Again, you can see some of those high clouds. As I look outside the window right now, things are turning a lot grayer and more overcast, as you see uh, with our radar scope. Why? Because the front off to the west is approaching the region. It means some business. It's going to cool us down, but it's also going to bring some showers tonight. As a matter of fact, if you have to plan your evening out, it could be a couple of rain showers around 8 o'clock, 8, 9 o'clock, mid evening. Temperatures will fall out of the 80s and be in the 70s here. 10 o'clock, also a few rain showers hours with hover, temperatures hovering around 70 degrees. We'll talk about overnight lows, talk about uh, Monday's temperatures and your full seven day forecast coming up. Annalisa. All right. Thank you so much, Scott. Well, new tonight, a body was found in the area that a 10 year old girl was reported missing in in Charles County, Maryland. Now, Sheriff Troy Berry shared the update on Twitter this afternoon. Around noon, he said the body was found near Turner Road and Covington Road. That's where his deputies have been searching for 10 year old Madeline Wallace, who is autistic. A medical examiner's office will confirm the identity of the person that was found at this time. Investigators say no foul play is suspected. Also new tonight, D.C. police are investigating a shooting at an apartment building in northwest Washington, not far from the Watergate building. Police responded to the Columbia Plaza apartments in northwest just before 3 p.m. Neighbors tell us they heard gunshots from inside a gym after an argument between two men. Police say the victim was conscious when they arrived. The building houses many students who attend George Washington University. They received alerts from the university about what happened there. He called me and said, hey, what's going on? Try to get yourself inside, uh, shelter in place. And um, yeah, it seemed uh, among my friends that most of them are, were pretty concerned, pretty worried. So far, no arrests have been made. And D.C. police are now investigating a shooting that left one person dead in the district early this morning. They say that the shooting happened shortly before 2 a.m. in the 1900 block of Good Hope Road in southeast Washington. The victim has been identified as 33-year-old Latanya Campbell. She was found inside a vehicle on V Street in southeast. A $25,000 reward is being offered for information leading to an arrest. Well, tomorrow, students at, are planning a protest at George Washington University over plans to arm campus police officers. Our Dave Laval talked to students on both sides of that debate. When George Washington University police patrol campus, they're not armed. That's about to change. University President Dr. Mark Wrighton announced last Thursday his intention to arm supervisory campus police officers with guns. It's to make the campus safer. Wrighton said in the post on the university's website in part, quote, whenever weapons are involved, unarmed officers cannot respond and must rely instead on other armed law enforcement. Some students welcome the announcement. As long as safety is the primary concern, then we're all good. I think if it'll keep students safe, then I'm, I'm sure that they're very qualified. In his letter, Wrighton reflected on shootings on other college campuses, including the University of Virginia, where three football players were killed November 13th, and three people died three months later during another shooting at Michigan State. Currently, Wrighton says only supervisory officers who complete specific training requirements, including specialized firearms training, will be armed. Still, some students say that's not enough to ease concerns. I just want people to be safe, and uh, I don't think guns contribute to safety, so that's my take. You can't really control somebody's actions, can't really control like or gauge how anybody handles the situation, so 
you know, tragedies happen when guns are involved. Protesters will gather here at Kogan Plaza Monday afternoon to let the president and university trustees know how they feel about the president's plan. That demonstration starts at 1 o'clock. At George Washington University, Dave Laval, DC News Now. Developing now is shooting at a Sweet 16 birthday party in Alabama left at least four people dead and multiple others injured. Maddie Beer Temple from our sister station has reaction from the community tonight. The shooting happened about 1030 Saturday night at Mahogany Masterpiece behind me. Law enforcement have confirmed four people were killed and a multitude of others injured. Dadeville Police Chief Jonathan Floyd asks for prayers and that people not let this define Dadeville. What we've dealt with is something that no community should have to endure. The DJ at the party last night shared what he saw happened. Keenan Cooper arrived about 945 and heard comments about someone having a gun. He says someone said if you have a gun, you need to leave. He says he noticed no one left and about an hour later shots rang out. Pretty scary. Um, I just had to try to make sure everybody around me was safe. So I put a couple people under the table in front of me because the shots was ringing off behind me. Cooper says there was no fight leading up to the shooting. As far as he could tell, he says he thinks the gun was inside and the shooting started from within, but says he couldn't see that well because the lights were off. Cooper says he's not sure what happened with the shooter. Uh, I don't know. There was multiple CDs here. The surrounding area, so something was probably bound to happen anyway. The superintendent of Tallapoosa County Schools says there will be counseling made available for students in all schools tomorrow. We will make every effort to comfort those children and don't lose sight of the fact that those are the ones most impacted by this situation. Aaliyah Sergeant Jeremy Burkett said anyone with tips is asked to call their tip line at 1-800-392-8011 or email sbi.investigations at aaliyah.gov. Now, law enforcement did not take questions at a press conference this morning, but said there is no risk to the public at this time. We'll keep you updated with more information as it becomes available. Reporting in Dadeville, Maddie Beer Temple, back to you. Right now, both blue and red states are discussing gun control as similar measures continue to stall in Congress. Washington correspondent Jesse Turner looks at the new legislation leaders hope to see at the federal level. We don't have to live like this, and today we are showing we are not going to anymore. Yes. Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer signed new gun bills into law Thursday, two months after a shooter killed three students on Michigan State's campus. The whole community was terrorized. The laws set new storage requirements for guns and ammunition in homes and expand background checks to all gun sales. Right now, only pistols require a background check to purchase, but long guns and shotguns do not. That doesn't make any sense. Whitmer, a Democrat, will also soon sign a so-called red flag measure into law. And Tennessee Governor Bill Lee, a Republican, is calling on his state's legislature to send a similar bill to his desk. A person that has shown that they are a real threat to themselves or to others, that individual should not have access to firearms. After last month's mass shooting at a private Christian school in Nashville, Lee also signed an executive order Tuesday to strengthen background checks on gun purchases. Power! Power! State Representative Justin Pearson was officially sworn back in Thursday after he and another black Democrat were expelled from the Republican-controlled State House for leading a gun violence protest. Pearson believes the outpouring of support for their reinstatements led to the governor's recent actions. Victory is ours! These leaders acknowledged the efforts in their states come alongside another mass shooting this week in Kentucky, where a gunman killed five people at a Louisville bank. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. And the deadline to file your taxes is quickly approaching this week, and experts say being proactive is the best way to stretch your dollars. Sarah Wilson from our sister station WHTM has details on how to avoid those pesky fees. Time is running out until taxes are due, and if you haven't filed yours yet, that means you have until Tuesday. The worst thing you can do is nothing. If, like millions of Americans, you know you won't be ready by then, there are steps you can take. Alex Langan is the chief investment officer at Langan Financial Group. He says the best thing you can do is file for an extension. 
that will typically give you six more months um, so you can push it to October. But there's a small catch. The issue with that, which people may mistake though, is that you still have to pay the taxes due. Even if you're not sure what you owe, Langen says do your best to guess and fill out a check. I would even drop it off at the post office itself to make sure that they stamp it. Um, otherwise, you get late filing, you get late fees. And those late fees can be hefty. Within 60 days, you get a maximum of $205 fine or 100% uh, penalty for what you fail to pay. There's also late fees and everything else. It gets very expensive. To file for extra time, go to irs.gov and search tax extension. From there, you can click request a filing extension and fill out the form. They want the money. They don't want to send you to jail. If you've already filed your taxes and owe money but can't pay it back all at once, there's a solution. If the IRS was willing to work with you, uh, I'd reach out to them and just say, Look, I recognize I owe this money. Can I get on some sort of payment plan or something? All right, Scott. Well, it was beautiful today. I got out for a little walk. It was warm enough. No jacket. Wonderful. Yeah, no, it was. It was very, very nice out there. Look at the uh, temperature right now. It's 75 degrees. It's overcast skies outside. Look at Reagan National Airport. You can see those cloudy conditions across the area. And the high today, well, it was 81 degrees. So we've dropped off from that, obviously. The average high should be 68 degrees. The morning low was 60. The average low should be 49. Look at the record 92 set back in 2002 and 29. Those were numbers reversed in 1928. So, yes, it was a warm one out there. Did talk about the 80s for your weekend, and sure enough, that did come to fruition. Our satellite radar shows that we've had a couple little dribs and drabs of shower activity, at least aloft. I haven't really seen any reports of falling on the ground here. Uh, but uh, the showers that are back off and towards just, just outside our reviewing area here, Western Maryland, uh, those showers are reaching the ground out towards Pennsylvania and parts of Western West Virginia. And those rain showers, along with maybe some thunder and lightning, could be headed our way over night tonight. I'll have a timeline for you coming up in the main weather in just a little bit. So I put that in the forecast. Showers and storms, temperatures dropping down in and around D.C. into the 50s. Once you get up towards Hagerstown area, we're we'll looking at temperatures in the 40s. And once you get out towards the mountains, we'll see temperatures dropping down into the 30s. Now, you'll see the numbers here falling out of the 70s, getting into the 60s by midnight and then into the 50s by around 5 o'clock in the morning. So the weather headlines here, showers and some storms overnight tonight, uh, clearing and cooling on, cooler on Monday, still breezy on Tuesday and warming right back up late in the week. <laughs> Are we looking at record warmth again? Well, stick around for my seven-day forecast. Annalisa.